Uh, let me go to my, uh, let me show you that chart. It's in my notifications. So I get so many, I get so many messages. I get so many notifications. It gets crazy here. So Hugo has a question. Uh, and this is his chart. I'll show it to Socrates. Um, so Hugo writes in his tweet and he tagged me and ugly. Uh, my model predicts a two pump rise to the top. Beware of the exponential white curve. Uh, we're passing it just like the pump from the first halving. There was a 75% correction after the first halving. This halving is replicating that behavior. I also said the same thing. I've also said that this year uh, will be more similar to 2013 than 2017, but not in magnitude because 2013 was a 100x year. 2017 was like a 20x year, something like that. It was about a 20x year. Uh, so we went from a hundred X year to about a 20 X year. And this year might be a five to 10 X year in total, five to 10 X for the year. And, and I, I say, we start the year from like earlier, like from the breakout. So from say 10,000, we consolidated at 10,000 for a while. So if you take a five to 10 X year from 10,000, that takes you between 50 and a hundred thousand. But here's what he uh, found. So, so check this out. So, I mean, we're only, uh, we don't have a lot of data here, but what he did was he took a look at the time from the low to the halving and both times. So this is the low to the halving and both times it topped exactly the same number of weeks later happened both times. Very interesting. I like that. So extrapolating from the low that took place in December of 2018 to the halving, you have an idea of a potential date of where the next halving is. And the reason why I like this chart is because it provides both time and price. And then he does this curve, his um, you know, exponential curve into the halving and then just extend it further. Mm -hmm. curve into the having and extend the same curve further. So same thing here. So this one is less steep. This one is more steep. And this is the steepness of our current curve. And he's putting us at about 150 at the end of September, price and time. But as you can see, we never, we didn't cross this line after the having last time, but we went exponential past the line the first time. And I think we're going to be somewhere in between. I don't think we're gonna go this exponential, but I do think now that we're breaking this line, uh, we should top out somewhere soon, pull back past the line and then do one more push later in the year. So I actually really like this chart. Yeah, I, uh, I like it too. Uh, one thing that's I'm kind of looking at is this first one here is connecting to a correction so at the having we have it connecting to the low and then here we have it more connecting to a high so i would kind of be wanting to maybe just oh you mean way. on the candle right see how that's all below that line and here it's well above. it's but he's just connecting to the candle, like whatever the price was on the week of the having. Oh, okay, I see. So it's not like he's choosing it. Like I, this I line see. is on a specific week, the week of the having. Now we can say if the week of the having had a large candle, should we be consistent and use the bottom of the candle, the top of the candle, or the middle of the candle? But um, this, you're just connecting into the candle that took place the week of the having. Okay. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And uh, yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. So it's possible he's connecting to the very top of that candle, the top of that candle and the top of that candle, but we can ask him. He's actually on, um, I'm texting with him now. Yep. Uh, I don't know if he's watching showing your chart on video. And then he had a specific question. Uh, that he just DM'd me. Hey, Tone, hope you are good. Uh, question to your stream. Uh, do you believe this bull market is more similar to 2013 or 2017? I just answered that. I think it's a lot closer to 2013 
And we even have a catalyst. Like in 2013, we had a banking catalyst of Cyprus banks. Uh, and now we have a catalyst of the US capital being invaded, uh, again, by crazies. And, um, and this catalyst can shoot us through the roof and then we pull back and then there's gonna be another catalyst later in the year. Well, and I would even argue that the main catalyst is the recent money printing. Uh, we really haven't had Bitcoin while they are busy printing a ton of money. And uh, furthermore, we also haven't had Bitcoin in a gold bull market. Uh, so having gold very bullish and then having recent money printing, uh, having them just stimulus checks, uh, there's a lot of very uh, bullish uh, impetus. And the reason I think it's more like 2013 myself is 2017 was really um, run up on a lot of FUD type of news, like the main sort of catalysts were like uh, these forks and, and people were mostly talking about uh, blockchain, not Bitcoin, like there was not very much um, uh, bullish uh, dialect for Bitcoin last time, whereas now it's all electronic gold and, and look at the Wall Street getting in and, and people are really starting to understand what it is. And then we're also in an environment where it's uh, becoming more important to people than, than ever before. So I, I agree with you that uh, I think that this one's going to be a little bit more like the 2013. And also, I think a lot more people are ready to buy this dip. Um, I think a lot more people, and, and we may not get a big dip because we're on the verge of Bitcoin being adopted as a currency for transactions. Uh, we're very close to stability. Once this thing goes above 100K and stays there, your small transactions are now stable. That's it. Like you can almost go and buy a cheap used car without worrying about Bitcoin volatility with Bitcoin. Yeah, and, and the technology is there, like uh, all the places that are starting to accept it. Like uh, when I shop on Amazon, I'm using Bitcoin. Uh, the Lightning Network is working incredibly well. Uh, so, I mean, just all of it is there and it's just uh, waiting for the for it to be priced in as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, that's, yeah, uh, much, much different than 2017 as far as I'm concerned and and uh, and there's and, and the other thing is that uh, the last runs were really the main part of the last runs were just driven by like nose pickers in their mom's basement who had like 20 or 30 or 50 bucks to put into the market. Uh, that was really the, you know, the majority of the crowd, uh, which means in my mind that there is tremendous room for this thing to go up uh, once some real money starts getting in if you get one guy that manages you know billions of dollars that's like getting ten thousand you know teenagers who put in a uh, hundred bucks or whatever uh, so once the ball really starts to get rolling with some of these uh real players uh and then you get the them starting to fomo and the other thing is the business is starting to put bitcoin on their books uh, businesses are, uh, there's some that are starting to, instead of holding US dollars, holding Bitcoin. And that's going to be restocked, um, reflected in their stock price. And then the other, their competitors are going to take notice. Uh, so there's just a, a, a lot of uh, very, very bullish things that I'm uh, seeing that, that really make me think this is uh, ready for another one of those 2013 type of moves. And the mempool is not that bad, guys. I mean, the mempool was worse in October and early November. So considering how Bitcoin is flying, it's still all hodlers. Uh, yeah, so Hugo is, is predicting close to 200K. Um, oh yeah, 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 so it's an exponential chart. So that's 140 and that's 300. So that's about 200. Yeah, so he's looking at about 200K by September, which would be okay. fucking insane. I like that. Which would be insane. It would be actually kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It would be scary because now that we have a communist government in America, watch your money. Watch your money. Uh, Trump was a capitalist. Like, I think they're going to try to put Trump in prison because they don't, they, they know what Trump knows and they can't have Trump like speaking in public. Like Trump and his family are not safe. Uh, it would be bad optics if he if he flees to like Russia, like Snowden, but because he ain't going to China because China's aligned with uh, with Biden, 
So Putin's only like safe, uh, like the only safety. So the only safety for Trump is probably Russia. It will look bad. It will look like he was a Russian puppet <laughs> while he was a president, but that's not true. Uh, he's just not safe. I think they're going to go after Trump because they can't, they have to silence Trump. I mean, Facebook already took him down. Twitter took him down. Uh, that's, I, I mean, this is like, how the fuck does an American company censor the American president that 75 million Americans voted for? Guys, you are witnessing the collapse of America. You are witnessing the collapse of America. It's over. It's fucking over. And that's why Bitcoin is going to go to 200,000 and you won't even be pricing it in dollars eventually. I have no idea what you'll be pricing it in, but it won't be dollars. It's over. And it was the election. It was the election that did it. It was the fraud that did it. And it's, uh, it's horrible. I, I think that, uh, the, that the best way to move on from uh, pricing it in U.S. dollars is um, pricing it in some sort of... Uh... Whoa, saw. Sweet. We're back. That's the hourly chart. This is beautiful consolidation. We got 20 more minutes. If this gives us a brand new hourly close, that is very good. Like right now, we are looking at a brand new hourly close. And I'm still going to exit my GBTC today if some of it, if the GBTC premium was pushing 40%, I would be out the majority of my GBTC. Look, I am incredibly bullish Bitcoin right now. I'm still behind on Willie Wu's newsletter. I texted Willie Wu. Hopefully I can get him on this weekend as well. But I'm very bullish, but I'm not going to mess with the daily MRI. And the daily MRI is coming in on Sunday. And I may risk it. I'm going to risk at least half of my GBTC position into Monday. But I am looking for a short-term top, a one to four candle correction, and then one more push. Guys, I could be underestimating the push. This could go into 60K. But this next push is going to be the equivalent, uh, or I'm just going to go back to Hugo's chart, uh, is going to be the equivalent of this, but I don't think it's going to go that high. 60K, my maximum here. What do you think? Um, yeah, I try not to um, think too much about the maximum moves uh, because uh, whenever I do that, it seems to always surprise me. So in, in these situations, I'm more trying to like think about what could be like, what could be possible and just trying to keep my mind open to that. My current target is uh, 44,000 um, by the 14th, maybe the 13th of uh, this month. And that is due to the hyperwave fractal on there. So I'm right. So, so, so as you say that, so let me just pull that up. So we're going to go to a shorter term chart or go to the daily chart. So Socrates is looking for a potential of 48, 44,000. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a line there. So Socrates is, is considering 44,000 on the 13th or 14th, which is here. But that's in line with my MRI, which I'm expecting on the 11th, on Sunday. So today is the 8th, 9th, on 10th, sorry, Sunday the 10th. And you're looking at 12th, 13th, 14th, right? Yep. So we're kind of in line. Now, I think that that is also a reasonable target. 44, 45,000 was like my bubble target from like last year onto this year. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that that's all in line. But... I see that as being a short-term correction mm -hmm. with one more push into the end of January to align with the weekly MRI, which has three more weeks to go. So that 44K is my short-term pullback for one more push as high as 60 by end of January. And that's my uh, high target. Now, if we get that, if we end up doing it, I should probably graph that out on a four-hour chart. Uh, you're liking that four-hour chart right there. Oh, yeah. Loving it. So if we map that out on a four-hour chart, because we're only talking the rest of the month, uh, which is still somewhat high-ish, right? So if we map that out on a four-hour chart, we're talking a move on a four-hour chart 
into 44,000. Let's split the middle here. Let's do the 12th of January. It's kind of in between your days and my days. Sure. Okay. And that's 45,000. 45, 44, same thing. Now, then I would be looking for a one to four day correction into the 20th. And then from the 20th, probably from the $35,000 area, maybe this top here. Where is that? 35? I can see a pullback to 35 and then a push into 60 by end of month, giving us that blow off top. And now I just need a red line here. So on a four hour scale, I am eyeing something like this. And then this would align with a weekly MRI top. It would also uh, align nicely with a move in the next three weeks to get us high enough above this white line, similar to what happened in 2013 with a bigger snapback. That makes a lot of sense to me. And that's um, kind of what I am the, the, uh, expecting um, where you are looking for that um, pullback. That's where I'm thinking it would be a good time for like an ABC correction right. down to the uh, right now. -high now, 20s. this pullback may not. Sorry, this pullback may not be this severe. Uh, 